There are two common definitions of closed sets, and today we'll prove those definitions are equivalent. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing closed sets along with these two definitions. The definition that we're using is that a set is closed if its complement is open. And today we'll prove that's equivalent to saying a set is closed if it contains all of its limit points. And so we'll prove that a set is closed if and only if it contains all of its limit points. So this will be a two-step process. The first step, the forward direction of the proof, will be to assume that A is closed, as in its complement is open, and then we'll prove that it contains all of its limit points. We'll do this part by contradiction. The reverse direction is just a little bit trickier. We're gonna be trying to show that a set containing all of its limit points implies that the set is closed. However, this will actually be easier easier if we prove the contrapositive. With the contrapositive, we get to prove this equivalent implication, where we'll get to assume that A is not closed, and we'll want to prove that A doesn't contain all of its limit points. It will be important that you understand what open sets and limit points are for this proof. I'll leave links in the description to my lessons introducing those topics. Let's begin with part one, proving the forward direction that a set being closed implies it can contains all of its limit points. Like I said, we'll complete this proof by contradiction. So let's suppose for contradiction that there's a limit point of our closed set A that's not an element of A. So we're assuming that A doesn't contain all of its limit points. We've got this limit point X that's not an element of A. But it is a limit point of A, so by definition of limit point, we know that there's a sequence of terms entirely contained in A that converges to X. And this sequence of terms in A getting arbitrarily close to X, which is not in A, is quickly going to let us set up our contradiction. Remember that we assumed A is closed, so by definition, that means that the complement of A is only Open. And of course, since the limit point X is not in A, it must be in the open set A complement. But then by definition of an open set, that means that there exists some delta neighborhood around X that's still entirely contained in the complement of A. So the contradiction pretty much is going to come from the fact that this sequence, which is supposed to converge to X, can't possibly converge to X because it can't get into this neighborhood, which is entirely in A complement. And here the contradiction is all spelled out. Since the sequence AN converges to X, it should be able to get arbitrarily close to x. So if we take epsilon to equal delta, the delta from this neighborhood that's entirely contained in a complement, well, since a n converges to x, there must exist some number big N so that every term of the sequence after the big nth term is within epsilon of the limit x. Of course, in this case, epsilon equals delta. So all of these terms of a n are actually within delta of x. But that means, by definition, that they are elements of this delta neighborhood of x, which we just said is a subset of a complement. And that is a contradiction, because the sequence a n was taken to be entirely in the set A. But now we're seeing because it gets arbitrarily close to X, which is not in A, some terms of the sequence must belong to this neighborhood that's contained in A complement. And that's a contradiction. Let's just summarize the details of this proof before moving on. We assumed that A was closed, which meant that its complement was open. We suppose for contradiction that A doesn't contain all of its limit points, so its open complement must have one of its limit points. But since the complement is open, there must be some space around the limit point that's entirely contained in the complement. However, it is a limit point, so there should be a sequence entirely contained in A that converges to this limit point X. But the sequence can't possibly do that if X is surrounded by some space that's entirely outside of A. 
So indeed, a set being closed implies that it contains all of its limit points. Let's move on to the reverse direction. Again, for the reverse direction, we're using the contrapositive. So we assume that A is not closed and we'll prove that it does not contain all of its limit points. Now, what does it mean for a set to be not closed? Well, that means that its complement is not open. And for a set to be not open means that it contains some point, say x, such that every delta neighborhood of x is not entirely contained in the not open set. So again, A being not closed means that its complement is not open, but by definition, that means that A complement contains some point x such that every delta neighborhood of x must have an element not in A complement. If that element, though, is not in A complement, by definition, that means that it is in A. This is going to allow us to take elements from A that get closer and closer to X and thus construct a sequence that converges to something outside of the set A. So since every delta neighborhood of this X in A complement since every delta neighborhood of it has an element that is in A, we can take, for each natural number n, an element of A that is in the 1 over n neighborhood of x. Again, every neighborhood of x has something that's in A. So for each natural number n, we'll take something in the 1 over n neighborhood of x that's also in A. And so we have constructed a sequence converging to x with terms that are entirely contained in the set A. And to wrap it up, here's a quick convergent sequence proof. Certainly, each term of the sequence is within 1 over n of x because each term a n comes from the 1 over n neighborhood of x, and that makes this proof pretty easy. We take an arbitrary epsilon greater than 0 and take big N to be a natural number that's greater than 1 over epsilon. Then we have, for all terms of the sequence after the big nth term, they must be within 1 over n of the desired limit x. We know that because each term of the sequence comes from a 1 over n neighborhood of x. So this is less than 1 over n, and then we just make this bigger twice by replacing the denominator with smaller numbers. Big N is smaller than N, 1 over epsilon is smaller than big N, so this is less than this is less than this, and 1 over 1 over epsilon is of course equal to epsilon. And so we've shown for any epsilon greater than zero, the terms of our sequence are eventually within epsilon of x. And thus, this sequence we've constructed, a n, by definition, converges to x. This means that x is a limit point of the set A, because each a n is in the set A. So x is a limit point of A, but of course x is an element of A complement. And so the proof is done. We've shown that A being not closed implies that A doesn't contain all of its limit points. And thus, if A does contain all of its limit points, it must be closed. And so we've established the equivalence of these definitions. A set A is closed, meaning its complement is open, if and only if it contains all of its limit points. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions.